Today we're taking a look at somebody's homemade custom walk-in cooler. You can see they've taken this old horse trailer and just converted it, insulated the box, and added a little condenser and evaporator. And they've got themselves a cooler. Um, I guess they said it was freezing up a lot. I just plugged it in like five minutes ago and suction line is not getting cold and this line right here, the high pressure line coming out, is not even warm. So I think that there's no refrigerant. Either that or the compressor's not pumping, but the compressor sounds like it's doing what it's supposed to. So we're going to put the gauges on there and see what's going on in a minute here. They added a piece of grating here so that they have airflow through this compartment but came around to the other side and was greeted by that, which I thought was really weird. Typically you'd just be able to see right into the coil, but in this case you can't because they actually made a cool air intake on the bottom. The coil doesn't look too dirty. So it sucks cool air from underneath the trailer, pulls it through the coil, does its cooling, and then kicks the heat out right here. So I thought that was kind of unique. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily the greatest airflow, but I think probably they're not going to have any issues with it like that. It does have a sight glass right there. I don't see anything flowing through it, which either means it's solid liquid, which I highly doubt because of the temps I'm feeling, or, uh, or it's solid empty. I think it's probably solid empty. There's the thermostat. I'll show you the inside quick. So it's just got like a secure lock right there and then additional handle here. And they used old signs as the interior aluminum tin, which I thought was kind of funny. The interior of this is really cute. They honestly did a fantastic job. They got this cute thermometer here, reading 71. It's kind of a nice style. They, they did a really fantastic job. I'm impressed. This good sealed off tin, this is probably not going to get very like moldy or anything. The only thing is this flooring and this wood material here might get a little bit, but not bad compared to like paneling walls. Nice little climate control unit. They even got themselves an outlet in here. They probably should have used seal, but oh well. Here's where our thermostat comes in. For some reason we've got two sensing bulbs. I don't know what one of, the, one of them is for, but I'm guessing one is for the thermostat. Not necessarily the easiest coil cleaning access ever, and these panels might be a little annoying to remove just because of where these brackets ended up. Yeah, overall I'd say they did a pretty good job, and we're going to throw the gauges on and see what kind of pressures we're getting. It just has a king valve here on the left side. Oh, this port was like loose. So how these king valves work is you back that stem all the way out, it closes off the port. So in order to access the port then, since it's backed out and closed off, we just use a square ratchet like this, and we'll just actually tighten it in. Now that that's open, you can see we're running in a complete vacuum here. So we're gonna go ahead and unplug the condensing unit because we've got some kind of major leak in the system that we need to find and fix before we can add refrigerant back in. So I've been checking along the whole system. I think I've finally located the leak. It's the digital leak detector. You can see it starts picking up refrigerant once I get into this cavity. I kind of just followed the liquid line, traced everything down that way, and I think it's right here on the side of this valve. Like right here somewhere is proving to be very difficult to actually like track down. I'm pretty confident that it's like right here, but I just can't get any bubbles to form around it. So kind of looking at the aluminum on this thing, you can see it has a pretty good ripple right here. Now that could be caused by heat from brazing all of these components in here when, when it was brazed, but also kind of looks like an impact ripple. Uh, ripple. So I'm kind of thinking if this thing got like dropped or something when it was being shipped, um, it could have hit on this corner or something and cracked or damaged this copper somehow. Because it seems like it's right behind there, so I can't soap it very well. 
and it's almost like it's trying to bubble out the other side. So I'm going to pull this fan blade and try to soap it on that side and see if I can get it to actually bubble because I'm getting really high readings there and really high readings there and everything else is just kind of finicky and we've lost like 5 or 10 PSI since starting to uh, leak check so it's a pretty decent leak. Well, more like 5 PSI. Okay, finally we found the culprit. Right, right there. Can you see it just bubbling a bit? Here, let me. So bottom, that bottom tube where it goes through there, now you can see it bubbling. See, it's a big leak, but it was basically just pushing so much air that I was getting high readings up top. So, we're going to have to try to get that fixed. It looks like it either rubbed through or cracked. Remove the drain pan entirely, drop it down, and then use our tin snip. Cut the aluminum, bend that down, and then braze it shut. But that's definitely our issue. Everything else really seems pretty sound. So I got that carefully trimmed back. And you can see right on the top, there's that, like, right there is where our leak is and it's right next to the aluminum rub mark so I think just fatigue and like it rubbing right there is what caused it to um, wear through. If you look at some of these other ones see how there's like a little bit of space on the bottom and then it's pretty tight on the top it's almost like at some point this thing got bumped so that every all the copper tubing is like <laughs> tightly pushed against the top of these aluminum things here and then just down here on the bottom this is the highest stress point since it has all of this way out here so we're gonna take some high percentage silver braze and we'll try to hit our torch down at an angle like this it's not gonna be a super pretty repair just because uh, coil repairs the aluminum always like melts back and discolors but if we can get some braze just globbed all the way around where it's leaking on here then we'll have this problem taken care of. So this is the braze we're going to be using. It's 5% silver. And this is the torch that we will be using. Just a good old turbo torch. These things are fantastic. I'll try to link to one in the description. Uh, I've got a wet rag handy for cooling it down after I braze it. Thankfully there's nothing close to here other than this little uh, Schrader port that can be damaged by heat. So we're going to put this wet rag right there. So you can see it definitely messes up the aluminum a little bit, um, like right there. But that's just kind of how it is, so I'm going to inspect it with this mirror. Looks nice and thick on there, so I think that's going to be good. We'll pull a vacuum on it and then double check it. I just put about 10 PSI into the system. I like to just pressure it up before I put the vacuum on for 30 minutes because it really saves wasted time if you accidentally miss a spot so with that pressure in there and a good heavy soap down we should be able to see if there's any leaks left on it of course the deep vacuum method will tell us the truth but if there's any other leaks in the system but I think we probably got it so never mind about these saying 28.7 I think they need to be recalibrated a complete vacuum for them for some reason is 28.8 or 28.7. It never gets down to 29.9 on these ones anymore. But the microns are stable at 699, so that's pretty good. I want to get it below 500, so I'm probably going to let it go for a while longer, but I'm pretty confident that 
we've at least gotten rid of the leaks and the system is actually pretty dry. So, so just after a while here, we'll charge it back up and see how she runs. So I'm gonna add in a solid pound and then we'll fire this thing up. I'm guessing it'll hold like three or four pounds. It doesn't list how much. You're supposed to write it in after you like get the thing running. So plug it in and power it up and put in the initial charge and then we'll actually write what kind of refrigerant and how much it's supposed to hold. Okay, let's see what it does here. High side pressure coming up. Low side pressure going down. Sight glass, very bubbly now. And yeah, boy, we got some heat on there. So we're definitely gonna be adding some more here. Um, and I did get the evaporator put back together, except for the side covers, because I wanna see how it's flooding. You see everything's starting to sweat nicely which is a good sign. We've got some sweating on those. It's kind of interesting how they have this set up. The compressor plugs into this outlet, and this outlet is switched using the thermostat. So we're gonna be adding a defrost timer in here because since this thing gets used at venues and stuff, it's like a rental trailer, um, the doors can get left open and the thing will just run continuous and very likely freeze up. So we wanna add a defrost timer in here uh, what we're going to have to do is interrupt the power going to this thing. I think we're within the uh, amp rating for switching it directly using the defrost timer right here. So we got it wired up. So this red wire is now the switched power for the unit. And I, I basically just added a piece of three wire that goes up. And then four and two is the contact that gets... Um, open so we have power coming in on three which jumpers to two and then When it's not in a defrost that power will just go straight through Four which will go down and through the thermostat which then comes back and is wire nutted to the red wire Which goes down to the switch so that should work fine. I'm gonna put it back together We'll turn it on and make sure that it actually does what it's supposed to so let's go. It's like 30 to let's Have it shut off at like 30 Three. Cut in it like almost 40. Um, I think I've got it cycled to a defrost right now. So I think when I plug this in, the compressor won't come on unless I'm just shy of a defrost. Okay, I'm just shy. So we'll go just a little more. And it kicks off the compressor. And then we'll just let this run for a while. We should be, our timer motor should be spinning. You can see the timer motor is spinning. Look at that little tiny gear right above the M on model. So this thing will cycle out of a defrost and the thermostat is just in line as well. So we can just cycle it out of a defrost manually. So I've got it set right now to defrost four times a day, 10 minutes per time. That's probably plenty. And I also marked this for compressor only. It's switched by thermostat. And I'm going to mark how much refrigerant and kind of what I did here. But we don't want anyone to run other stuff on here. Like I wish this only had one outlet. Because let's say you plugged in like another cooler or something. Then we would be running too many amps through this defrost timer. You can see it says right here on 12 gauge wire we're good for 20 amps. Uh, and it talks about the supply contacts. Oh, here they are. So we're good for 40 amps of non-inductive 120 volts. Yeah, I don't want people to use this outlet for stuff. Also, it randomly shuts off both when the defrost happens and when the thermostat shuts off just because of how this guy set it up. I don't think it's a bad way to do it. It's just a little bit unique. So there it is, all good to go. I marked how much refrigerant and what kind. And yeah, it's looking good. The line cooled down quite a bit more. It just was so hot in there that it was really moving a lot of heat. I think this is kind of neat over here. They've got their like hoses on the inside for root beer or beer or whatever. And you can just open up this little side cubby and it's all right there. It definitely doesn't look like it would be nice, but when you open it up and it's just beautiful on the inside.
thing is there's no way to get out of there if you got stuck in there it's kind of not great but so it's the next day it's all cooled down and good to go guy's gonna come pick it up later on I like his thermometer it's like 33 right now in here so a little on the cool side but that thermostat could be adjusted a little different yeah really a cute little cooler trailer well anyway hope that you found that video interesting and helpful or just entertaining and uh, I will talk to you in the next video